Hey guys and welcome back to a new very exciting video today because what we will start with today is KMM, Kotlin Multi-Platform. So in the next weeks and months I will actually be teaching you how you can build Android and iOS apps together with our favorite programming language Kotlin. Around the start of this year I made a video here on YouTube where I talked about that uh, KMM, Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile is actually a pain to set up and actually yeah it took me a whole day to actually get a hello world app running and that's no better so now we have a much more convenient setup and we can just create our KMM project once we have the initial setup and run that just like a normal app it will run on ios and it will run on android it's really amazing and that's why i also start to make tutorials about that now that doesn't mean that i will now only do KMM content so please don't think that uh, i'm also just learning that and i will of course only make a video about something came and related if I also personally understood, uh, understood that myself because otherwise yeah I can't really teach it. So in this very first video of this came and playlist I will show you how you can build a simple hello world app that will yeah just display a text in the end and of course all the setup that is involved to actually being able to create this KMM project inside of Android Studio and also inside of Xcode. First of all, in case you have never heard of KMM before, let me quickly explain what that is. So KMM stands for Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile. So we do have Kotlin Multi-Platform, which in the end it just refers to sharing Kotlin code between different platforms. So that could be a Windows program, that could be a Mac program, that could be an Android app. So that itself is just Kotlin multi-platform. And now there is a special version you can say of Kotlin multi-platform and that is KMM, Kotlin multi-platform mobile. And that specifically refers to sharing code, sharing Kotlin code between Android and iOS. So it's actually not like Flutter that we just have one single code base. In case of Flutter, that would be Dart code, where we just put all of our code, all of the UI code, business logic, data logic, and then we have an app that actually runs on iOS and Android. No, with KMM, it's actually a little bit different. Here we actually are only able to share big portions of our code. So the UI and the things that are actually specific to each platform still need to be implemented separately. So if we have a screen, then all the UI elements on the one hand need to be implemented either using Jetpack Compose or XML for the Android side or using Swift for the iOS side. So we actually need both these implementations for the UI because that is very specific to each platform. But on the other side, if we actually have business logic or if you have data logic, like having a database query, having API calls, then we can actually implement this logic in Kotlin now with KMM and share this between iOS and Android so that we only have uh, have to write that code once and actually use that code in both our iOS and Android app. And the big advantage of that is now, on the one hand, of course, that we can use Kotlin, which is a great language, but on the other side, that we just get two purely native apps. So both for iOS and Android, we will be actually using the native uh, UI components, which will on the one hand make it feel like native because it is native. So we will really get two native apps out of, yeah, just one, not one code base, but at least a code base with a lot of shared code between both platforms. However, there are actually two major limitations I want to talk about here that are important to know. On the one hand, you need a Mac to actually follow through this playlist because if you want to make the iOS app here, then that only works if you are able to run Xcode, which is just the IDE you use to make iOS apps, and you also just need a Mac to run the iOS emulator, for example. If you just care about the Android side here, then I think you can do this on Windows, um, but then of course you can build the iOS app. And the second limitation that is important to talk about here is that all the libraries you actually use in the shared code section need to be purely written in Kotlin. So you can't use something like Retrofit, for example, because Retrofit is a library that was written in Java. So instead, you would need to use something like a Kator client, which is a pure Kotlin library. So before we now actually get into installing KMM and setting that up to actually be able to create a KMM project, I want to stress out that I will structure this playlist and basically all my KMM videos in a way that it makes it very easy for people who know native Android development to actually follow through. So because most of my current subscribers are native Android developers, I will of course 
spend more time explaining things uh, on the iOS side, how we can build UI on that, but I will spend less time, for example, to explain specific Kotlin language features, which most native Android developers should know about. If you're a complete newbie here, like you, you haven't coded at all, then I really wouldn't recommend starting with uh, something like KMM because that's already quite complex. It comes with a quite complex uh, project structure. So in that case, I would recommend to first learn some basics of uh, just native Android. So for everybody, that is following through here. The prerequisites for you are actually that you have Android Studio installed. That is what I assume that you have the JDK installed, which comes with Android Studio, so the Java development kit, and that you have Xcode installed. So that is the IDE we will use for the iOS side. If you don't have that, then you can simply get that on the Mac App Store. So simply search for Xcode, click install, and that's Pretty much it. And the rest that is actually needed here specifically for KMM, I will actually show you how you can install that and how you can then set up a, a blank KMM project that we can also run on iOS and Android. So I'm currently in my terminal and the first thing I want to actually make sure is that you have Brew installed, which most macOS developers will probably have. So we can simply type Brew and if it will print you something like this with um, potential commands then you are good. If you don't have this and if it says something like oh, cannot find command brew, you need to go to brew.sh and actually run this command in your terminal to actually install homebrew. So homebrew is in the end, you can see um, it, that's pretty clear. It installs the stuff you need that Apple or yeah, that in this case, Apple doesn't give you. So in this case, we will use this to install a tool called uh, KDoctor later. I will talk about what that is actually for. We're actually not later. Let's actually get to this now. So if you have brew installed, as I said, then you can type or you should type brew install KDoctor. So KDoctor is actually a tool that comes from JetBrains, which actually just scans your system for everything you need to actually be able to create KMM projects. So that's actually a perfect starting point um, to actually quickly see which tools you're actually missing to create a KMM project. We can do this here after installing that by simply running the kdoctor command, pressing enter. And now we get a bunch of text here. So first of all, you can see your system and this V simply stands for a check, so that's good. And if you have an X here, then there is something wrong, which prevents you from actually using KMM. So you can see my system is, yeah, it is a uh, macOS system, so that's cool. I have Java installed, which comes with Android Studio. That was properly detected. Um, here, Android Studio, we see there is an X. So Android Studio is currently not set up to actually support KMM. And why? Well, it tells us the Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin is not installed. So it directly tells us what we actually need to do or what we're missing. And that is what we now need to work on. So we want to open Android Studio. And here in this plugins tab on the left, you want to go to marketplace because there is a specific plugin for Android Studio that is called Kotlin multi-platform. This one here, I want to click install. And with this plugin, it basically just adds the option for us to create um, a KMM project directly when we see all these options where we can create a new project, like do you want to create a Compose project, an XML project, and then there will be an additional option for KMM projects. So we can now restart our IDE to apply that change. And then if we now actually run this command again, this kdoctor, then we should now see that there is a check mark for the Android Studio part. Yes, there is. So now it actually properly detected that we have the Kotlin multi-platform mobile plugin installed. Xcode is fine since I have Xcode installed. And now we see there is an X for CocoaPods. What is CocoaPods? CocoaPods is basically the uh, dependency manager or one dependency manager for iOS apps. And we can use that together with KMM. Uh, in this first setup video, we won't because th that involves quite some more setup, which I will show you in a later video but we should still make sure that we actually um, get a check mark here basically. And for that, we can see in my case, system Ruby is currently used and CocoaPod is not compatible with system Ruby. So yeah, CocoaPod Coco actually needs Ruby to run. And what we want to do in that case is we want to install this Ruby version, Ruby 2.7 via homebrew. So we use brew again. When I say brew install, Ruby at 2.7. So we specify that version. Um, KMM is actually compatible with or 
actually um, Cocoa Pods. Install that. There we go. That was installed. If we now run kdoctor again, then take a look here. Now we get that check mark here for Cocoa Pods because we installed the proper Ruby version uh, 2.7. This Ruby gem should actually already come from Xcode as well as CocoaPods, I think. If not, uh, like if you don't have CocoaPods and CocoaPods generate, you can install this using Ruby gems. So you could say gem install CocoaPods, for example, or CocoaPods generate, and that would install that if it would tell you that these are missing. But I think that this actually comes with Xcode. The important part is now that it says your system is ready for Kotlin multi-platform mobile development. And I hope it says the same for you. Of course, I can't cover all the different Mac OS specs here. Um, I'm running an M1 um, CPU here, so that is working fine for me. I don't know if there are any specific uh, setup steps you need to follow if you're using something like an Intel CPU on a Mac. Um, in that case, there is the uh, documentation for KMM, so the Getting Started Guide is actually quite good. So I would recommend you um, simply take a look at that. But yeah, it would be cool if you would actually let me know if you have some, some problems with the setup just down below by leaving a comment or so, and maybe we can uh, search for a solution together. Inside of Android Studio now, since KDoctor tells us we are ready to use KMM, we want to create a new project. So we click New Project. Then here, under all these different types of projects we could create, we want to scroll completely to the bottom. And since we now have the plugin for KM, we can also create a Kotlin multi-platform app. That is what we want to do. Clicking next, giving this a name, and let's just call this my first KM app. So this won't do anything in a, in a later video. We'll of course also uh, make an app that actually has functionality that is useful. But for this first tutorial and the second one, we'll actually just have a plain project. And the next one, I will then actually walk you through that um, blank project structure since that's quite complex already. But for now, let's just click next. And now that is different from creating a normal Android project because we see that we now have an Android application name and an iOS application name. And we actually have a shared module name. So we will now have a project with uh, three different modules. On the one hand, we have one for the Android app. So where we just put our plain Android code. Well, actually, I'll actually get to this in the next video in more detail. Um, but we basically have three sections in our app, we can say where we can put in specific code. So Android code, iOS code and shared code. That would be the, the quick version of this. And here we can see we can choose an iOS framework distribution. It currently selected CocoaPods as a dependency manager. For now, I want to use the regular framework so that it does not use this CocoaPods because that will require some further, further setup that would um, be too much for this simple setup video here. If we choose a regular framework, it will just work out of the box that we can run our app. So you can also see um, the difference if we're using CocoaPods. We can then just easier add dependencies with this CocoaPods dependency manager. Um, but this requires some further setup in Xcode. And if we use the regular framework, which we do now, then, is the, uh, then the plugin is actually directly integrated via um, a Gradle task. So it will still use Gradle, at least for Android. And we can now click Finish. And after the initial sync basically finished, we will see something like this. Right now, the package structure looks super simple, but as soon as we actually switch to the product view here, which is more relevant for KMM projects, we see if we open this up, there is a lot of stuff happening. We have an Android app, we have an iOS app, we have a shared module here. We have tons of Gradle files, as you can see here. Um, so I will actually talk about these Gradle files and how the structure works so where we put which code. I will talk about that in more detail in the next video. And in this one, we will, we just want to run our app. So first of all, what you want to do is we want to run our app. So we click on run Android app and this will just run our Android app. I will of course also show you how you can run the iOS app. But if I drag over my emulator here, we see it says hello Android 28. So if we actually take a look here in our Android app module in source Java, then all we see is nothing new to us Android developers. We just have a normal main activity. And here we just display a text view where we just set the text equal to greet. Greet comes from this function here. It returns greeting, not greeting. And this greeting is actually a shared 
class. So if we hit control and click on that, then here we actually see the implementation of that. And it returns hello platform that platform. And because for iOS and Android, there's of course a difference how we actually need to access the current platform the app is running on, that actually belongs in our shared code. But this greeting class is actually shared between iOS and Android, if that makes sense. It's just a very simple demo here in the next video. Again, I will get more into this, how this works. And I'll also show you, of course, how you can use Jetpack Compose with this. So right now it's just using XML by default. That's really not a big deal to migrate that. But what we now wanna do is we want to open Xcode and we wanna click open a project or file. Because what essentially happened here is that the, is that the iOS part of our app is already also included here in our initial KMM project. This is not the project that I'm currently talking about. Um, let me quickly open this iOS app folder here in uh, Finder. So we go right click, open in Finder. Then I have that here. I can open uh, Xcode again. I simply want to, well, let me just pull this over. We will simply drag this iOS app here in this window. So we just get the path of that and then close this again. So this is now the iOS app folder here of this KMM project. And in here we have an Xcode project file. That is the file that Xcode needs to actually read our iOS project of that. So that's really just the iOS side of, the, of things. So we want to select this and click open. And now it will open that in Xcode. It's currently indexing that. But on the left, we can already see the files that are now iOS specific. For example, this content view. And here we again see this greeting class, which is the cool thing now about KMM. You just saw this greeting class on the Android side, and you also saw that now on the iOS side. So it's effectively shared code. And you also see that it says no such module shared. This should actually go away as soon as we compile our project for the first time and launch it on an iOS emulator, which I already do have open here. Mm. Let's actually run it on that one by selecting a device here, which is I think iPhone 12 Pro. If we then click run, then waiting a little moment, build succeeded, you can see that works. And now we see the iOS app. It says, hello iOS 15.5, which is super cool. So you now successfully made your very first KMM app that works both on Android and on iOS. So I hope everything worked well for you. I could believe that um, some of you might have some struggles because KMM might still be a little bit tough for specific uh, hardware combinations, I would say. Um, but for me, it now works really well. Half a year ago, it was terrible to set this up. And in the next video, I think we're all ready to actually go through this complex project structure so I can actually explain what does which um, and what, what does which things. And yeah, what just the, the purpose of all these files are, where do we put which code and all these things. So I hope I'll see you back in the next video. Have an amazing day and bye bye.